If I told you this is a picture of a man transporting fecal sludge in Nairobi, Kenya from the site of collection to a transfer station for delivery to treatment, could you tell me what's inside of his barrel? In this module, you'll learn how to answer that question. Following this module, you will be able to distinguish varieties of sludge name factors influencing fecal sludge characteristics, and name the main constituents of fecal sludge related to treatment. To better understand what fecal sludge is, I think it is helpful to walk through three definitions, excreta, fecal sludge, and wastewater, and what's different about them. So excreta is urine and feces. This is different than fecal sludge, which contains excreta, but in addition includes anything else that goes into the on-site containment technology. And anything else really means anything else, from flush water, cleansing materials, menstrual hygiene products, bathing or kitchen water, garbage, or municipal solid waste. So this, then, is the fecal sludge management service chain. Wastewater, on the other hand, also contains excreta, but it is transported via a flush toilet to a sewer and then transported via sewer to a treatment plant. So wastewater and fecal sludge have entirely different service chains. In addition, wastewater contains less municipal solid waste or garbage because it's difficult to flush it in the toilet. And in addition, it can include stormwater management. Another way to think about it is to think about different types of sludge. Sludge could be transported in a sewer and be part of the wastewater service chain. Or it could be transported without a sewer and be part of the fecal sludge management service chain. Wastewater sludge could be sewer sludge while it's still being transported in the sewer, or it could be after it's been received at a wastewater treatment plant. Examples of this could be from a waste stabilization pond, from activated sludge, or following final treatment, which is commonly referred to as biosolids. Types of on-site technologies can include septic tanks and also pit latrines. Septic tank sludge is also commonly referred to as septage. And it includes the sludge that's in a septic tank, the scum layer, and also the liquid that's in there while it's being emptied. So this chart is not in any way comprehensive. It's just to provide some examples and show the reason why fecal sludge is so highly variable is it because it comes from the individual household level and is not homogenized during transport in the sewer. Also, it's so highly variable because it means literally any type of technology that's not connected to the sewer, from dry toilets to flush toilets to with or without gray water. What else contributes to the variability of fecal sludge? Things we've already mentioned, like pit latrines versus septic tanks. This is the type of containment. What is going into the containment? Is it excreted in black water, with or without forms of gray water, meaning it can all be a slurry or mostly water, all the way to a semi-solid? This is the contents. The emptying frequency, which affects level of stabilization, for example, public toilets or commercial buildings where the containment is emptied as frequently as daily to weekly, in contrast to systems with emptying frequencies of years. This means that fecal sludge can range from fresh or raw to partially stabilized, which is due to the storage duration. But also, how was it emptied? Was it fully or partially emptied? Was water added to help remove the sludge? These are emptying practices. Characteristics are also affected by if technologies are performing as designed. This is treatment performance. 
How well technologies were constructed? Are they lined or unlined? Are they really watertight? This is quality of construction. Infiltration or inflow from groundwater and temperature, which affects rates of degradation. So what does all this variability actually mean in terms of quantification? This figure illustrates COD values plotted against total suspended solids to volatile suspended solids for fecal sludge analytical results from some of Sondek's research studies. In comparison, it also shows values for influent of wastewater treatment plants taken from the Metcalf and Eddy reference. Note also that it's in a logarithmic scale. What you see here is that fecal sludge is up to two orders of magnitude more concentrated than wastewater, in addition to being highly variable. The same technologies will have widely ranging characteristics in comparison to each other, and areas within the same city will have widely ranging characteristics. The main constituents of fecal sludge that we will mostly focus on in regards to treatment objectives are solids and moisture contents for dewatering and drying of fecal sludge, forms of organic matter for the stabilization of fecal sludge, nutrient management, and inactivation of pathogens. Because there is still a general lack of information on fecal sludge characteristics, we thought it would be useful to compile this report of 76 samples that we analyzed in Kampala, Uganda. The samples are presented in increasing concentrations of COD. For each sample, there is a picture of where the sample was taken and what it looked like in the laboratory. There is characterization information on solids, nutrients, organics, and also qualitative information like how viscous did it appear and information on the type and usage of on-site containment. You can see in these photos how as the COD concentration goes from 1,000 milligrams per liter to 9,000 milligrams per liter to 26,000 milligrams per liter, the visual appearance is also quite different. Qualitatively, you can already get a rough idea of characteristics based on appearance. Hopefully you'll find this report useful to get an idea of the range of fecal sludge characteristics. It can be downloaded for free on our website. So now, if I ask you what's in the barrel that the man was transporting in Nairobi, could you answer? I hope so. Actually, I hope your answer would have to do more with why you could not say exactly what's in there. Because fecal sludge means so many things, but provides some insight as to what could be in there. Because in this module, you learned about the wide varieties of different sludge types, factors influencing fecal sludge characteristics, and the main constituents of fecal sludge related to treatment. Thanks for joining. See you next time.